Hey booktube, this is Kelly. Thank you so much for watching my channel, books I'm not reading. It is not cold here by any means, but my basement is very cold. So I've got some tea here and I'm bundled up. And I'm ready to do the It's All Relative tag, uh, which was created by AJ Dunn Reads and Writes. And I was tagged by Shelly Swear, Swearingen, Swearingen, excuse me. And uh, Shelly is one of my favorite new booktubers. Um, so bubbly and fun. Um, and I want to tag a couple people. Uh, the first uh, booktuber I'd like to tag is Red Dot Reads. Um, she is, lives in Singapore. And I watched this, this fascinating vlog that she did. And she made vlogging look so easy. I was extremely jealous. Um, I'd also like to tag, and I just, I'm so sorry. I think her name is Amo, Amohana, but her channel starts with Hamashavini, and then there's another word that I can't say, but I will link to that channel down below. These are all great booktubers that you should be um, checking out. Um, the next booktuber I'd like to tag is Teacup the Storyteller, and finally I'd like to take tag Christy and Marginalia and Christy I hope I hope by now you have figured this out because I watched your saw your booktube newbie tag and there's there's no way to leave comment I'm not exactly sure what's going on there but anyway so I hope I hope you already know that at this point because <laughs> I'd love to see you do a tag and I'd love to be able to comment on your booktube newbie tag so hopefully by the time this video goes up all things will be resolved. This tag I feel a little weird about um, because frankly, you guys, I have talked about many of these books many, many times, but here we go. <laughs> so the first question is, Mamma Mia, recommend a book with a mother character that is pivotal to the story. Now this might seem a little contradictory, but I'm going to go with About a Boy by Nick Hornby. I love Nick Hornby. I don't like all of his fiction, but I do like, um, I do like the majority of it and I, and I really love his nonfiction. Um, so, and he's also a incredibly talented, um, uh, screenplay writer. Yeah. So he's, he's amazing. Um, but anyway, About a Boy the main character is a, a single guy and he figures out like if he hits on um single moms like oftentimes they'll break up with him and he doesn't have all that guilt he doesn't feel bad about it um anyway he he encounters this kid marcus um and marcus's mom is just really really struggling and and that plays a, a really big part of the story but I love this book. Um, this is one of the books we own multiple copies of. Number two, Papa Don't Preach, a book with a father character you like or despise. Um, so I went with um, the dad, um, his name is Fred Scully, um, in uh, Tim Witten's book, The Writers. Uh, so um, Fred Scully has moved to Ireland and is working on this like old, falling apart kind of cottage and getting ready for his wife and his daughter to come and live with them. And he goes to the airport to pick them up and they don't show up. And so then we kind of follow his journey of trying to find them and find out what happens. So um, I really, I did like him and uh, yeah, this is, I, th I think I've read two Tim Witten books now. I really need to read more. Um, I read that actually for um, Aussie April, not this year, but last year. Uh, number three, Brothers and Sisters, a book with an interesting sibling relationship. So for this, I went with a graphic novel. This is Epileptic by David B. Um, for those of you who've been watching my channel for any amount of time, um, you, you uh, may know I have epilepsy. Um, and so that's how we ended up acquiring this book. Um, and David B, um, his graphic novel is about his relationship with his brother 
who does have epilepsy. Um, so yes, it is a very interesting dynamic and it's very interesting as someone with epilepsy to see how someone on the other side of things might perceive you. Um, so yeah, uh, this was a, I was, was glad when I finally, took me a while, but I finally did get to that. It's been 84 years. A book you like that is multi-generational or chronicles a character's whole life. Okay, so it does not chronicle her, chronicle her whole life, but I absolutely love A Girl Named Zippy by Haven Kimmel. And because Jason has like this just magic power, like we met her and uh, um, I think she might be coming to visit us again soon, which is just kind of nutty to think about. But anyway, this is a hilarious book of her growing up in um, a small town in Indiana. And it made me laugh, it made me cry. I've read her um, uh, kind of follow-up memoir. She also has a lot of novels. Um, I think the book after this is um, when my mother got off the couch, something like that. But um, yeah, so it's just this whole, all the family kind of dynamics are at play in this mem memoir and um, it's just beautiful and wonderful. And I really, really wish that Haven would write another, um, another book like this. I love Zippy so much, so. Question five, you complete me. Very nice Jerry Maguire reference there. Um, a book with an interesting marriage as a central element to the story. So this book was destined to be in my version of this tag because um, I could have used this to answer several questions. Um, this is Wallace Stegner's Angle of Repose, which won the Pulitzer Prize. But I think I love the fact that this book is about the West and, and so much of it takes place in the West, but this is a book about marriage. And it's a book, I, I think I read it either right before we were married or maybe, maybe within the first six months of our marriage. I'm not exactly sure, but early on in my marriage to Jason, I read this and then I read it again later. And it was a completely different experience. Um, and I know the next time I read it, it will be a, another experience. So, and, and it's just a book that you, you look at and you know that you're going to keep reading it. Um, the, the marriage that I think is so central is between um, uh, Susan, Susan Berling Ward. Uh, and I think that's, I think that's right. Su Susan Berlin Ward and um, her husband is Oliver. I think somebody, I think the last time I talked about this book, somebody told me like their kid's middle name is Oliver after, after the character in this. So that was awesome. Um, anyway, but it is, it is just an incredible portrait of marriage and what it means to be married and married life. And um, yeah. So I love, love this book. Picture it, Sicily, a book with an interesting elder character. <laughs> okay, I kind of cheated. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, I picked How to Stop Time by Matt Haig and I did that because the character looks like he's 41, but he's been alive for centuries. So I think he's like 400, 400 something. Uh, in this book and I just I again I mean I could have used Angle of Repose to answer this prompt and in Jane Austen July I'm trying not to pick any Jane Austen books because I, I feel like some of you are probably tired of hearing about Jane Austen so so this is what I went with and I know I know it's I'm cheating a little bit there but sometimes sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do okay Question number seven, friends with benefits, a book with a found family or friends as family element. And I had to go with the Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. Um, Pickwick and his friend who's, he, he's kind of a servant, but they're also, there's definitely a friendship element. 
Um, Sam Weller it is just one of the greatest friendships in uh, literature. And I know this book takes a lot of criticism. Um, people, you know, think it's one of Dickens' worst books. And I will just love it till the day I die. Um, it, it made me laugh out loud. And honestly, like the end, it was just so beautiful. Like it brought me to tears. So I love this book and I love, absolutely love Pickwick and Sam Weller. They're just uh, fantastic. Okay, question eight. Oh, this is my favorite prompt. I think we're alone now. How many of you had crushes on Tiffany? Fess up, fess up in the comment section. Um, this is a book with a character who was lost, left behind, or abandoned. Um, can also be a story with an orphaned or adopted character. I had to look really hard and finally I relented and went to my YA, um, uh, <laughs> small, small YA section and grabbed this. I've been meaning to read this for a while, Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. This is a very, look at, look at the, <laughs> edge of the book there so I have owned this book for a long time um, it did win the Newbery Award and I remember loving it as a girl um, it is about let me make sure I get her name right Karana the Indian girl who lived alone for years on the island of the blue dolphins um, yeah so the tribe like leaves and for some reason I think she I feel like I remember her running into a cave to go back to get something or something like that. And I could be, I could be totally wrong. I, I feel like she somehow got separated from everyone and then they left without her and um, she was, she's alone. So I, like I said, I remember really loving this as a girl growing up, but it's been a long, it's been a long time since I've read it. So we'll have to give it another try here before long. Okay, and then finally we get to question number nine. Fur baby, a book where a pet or animal is part of the family and or plays an important role in the book. Um, okay, so again, I, I think I think I've established <laughs> on this channel I have like that eight-year-old girl addiction to wanting your own horse wanting to take horseback riding lessons, that sort of thing. I have done some horseback riding uh, in my life with with uh, humorous outcomes. Uh, one of my horses had an allergy to the flowers that were blooming, so he like just sneezed the whole time. But anyway, I, I do really, really love horses. Um, and this is one of my favorites. This is Chosen by a Horse by Susan Richards, um, and I don't know, I don't know what to say except like make sure you have Kleenex close by uh, when you get to the end of this book. I was, I was really surprised and taken aback, but I mean there are so many horse books, um, you know, uh, I love Seabiscuit by uh, Lauren Hill Hillenbrand. Um, I also, I also have a lot of dog books too. And I'm not really sure how that happened, but I do have, um, I do have, at, I can think of at least two memoirs, maybe, no, three memoirs that relate to dogs. And I need to read those because I'm not really sure that they're gonna be the kinds of things that I want to um, keep forever. Like I probably should find a dog lover, right? <laughs> and share with them. <laughs> anyway, so thank you, Shelly, for tagging me. This was great fun. And um, I look forward to seeing other versions of this tag. Uh, Booktube, remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will be back with another video very soon. I'll talk to you later, bye.